Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and Godzilla vs. Kong is now in theaters and on HBO Max. To celebrate, I'm going to take a look at a couple of the new toys from Playmates. I wouldn't normally review toys like these, but as you can see, um, I actually got these for a bit of a discount on account of how damaged the boxes were. I also hope that the hype of the movie would give me some extra clicks. So I figured, you know what, for 10 bucks, maybe it'd be kind of fun. Oh, and by the way, apologies in advance if you didn't know that Mecha Godzilla was in the movie. If it makes you feel better, I didn't know either until I saw it on the shelf. But how does this action figure compare to this one? <laughs> Only one way to find out. Let's take them over to the review station and dig in. Starting off with Godzilla, I do want to say up front that I will take into account the fact that the package is damaged while making my judgment. That said, we can see that this is the Hong Kong Battle Godzilla. The box tells us that he comes with battle damage reveal. Kind of reminds me of the dino damage feature from the old Jurassic Park toys. On the back, we get this nice product shot as well as an idea of what other figures are in the wave. I think this is a nice, colorful, fun package for kids, and I will say, I had a good time kind of futzing around a little bit while I was standing in the store. It actually really helped sell me on buying it. Nice fun box for the kids for presentation. This gets one whole point. Getting Godzilla out of the package, and the first thing you'll notice is he comes with this kind of blue and purple color scheme. The second thing you might notice is that the plastic is actually translucent. And if you remember my review of the X-Rex, you know how much I like that. So just for giggles, here he is in front of a lamp, just so we can kind of get an idea of that translucent plastic. What I don't like is the lack of paint detailing on his head. Considering how colorful this is, that just looks so plain. Like imagine just how nice some yellow for some teeth or some eyes would just really pop. For presentation, I'm giving Godzilla half a point. Moving on to posability, Godzilla has a hinge in his jaw, side to side rotation at the head, disc hinge at the shoulders, disc hinge at the thighs, a little bit of swivel at the ankles, and a pretty decent ball jointed tail. Some ball sockets in the shoulders and maybe some hinges of the wrist would have been nice, but honestly this is a kid's toy. For posability, I'm giving him one whole point. Moving on to playability, Godzilla comes with this battle damage piece, clips on like so, and he also comes with a blast of atomic breath. And there you go! Playability is more than accessories, though. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Here he is up against my favorite Godzilla figure from when I was a child, and they scale surprisingly well, too. And since they have so much in common, I thought it might be fun to bring out that Mexican bootleg X-Rex, and yeah, these look like a fun matchup. And it's not quite King Ghidorah, but here he is alongside the Hydra from the 1990s Hercules series. And for one more monster, here he is next to Shelob from Lord of the Rings. This is a fun, colorful toy that just makes me all the more interested in the movie and what this Hong Kong battle is all about. For playability, I'm giving Godzilla one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I'm going to be honest, if they weren't discounted, I would not have bought them. $10 isn't that bad, but when you think about the Lannard Alien and Predator figures and all they came with and all of their articulation, it does seem like we're being just a little bit shortchanged. For price, I'm giving it half a point for a grand total of 4 out of 5. Moving on to Mechagodzilla, the packaging is pretty much exactly the same. Suffice it to say, for packaging, Mechagodzilla also gets one whole point. Looking at the face, we can see these just kind of tiny little red dots for eyes that are really creepy. I'm assuming he's going to look a little bit more metallic in the actual film and probably have a lot more paint detailing. I love the boxiness of his limbs. It kind of reminds me of an 80s cartoon like Voltron or Transformers. And I like his little pincer hands. His tail is pretty cool. It's got this kind of bony skeletal look. Nasty little stinger at the end. And speaking of being kind of skeletal looking, you can see that his toes are these kind of long kind of bony claws. And still looking at his feet, you can kind of see like the gears and everything in there. Of course it could have benefited from a wash to bring out all that detail, but there is a lot of detail there, and I'm really digging this design. For presentation, I'm giving Mechagodzilla one whole point. Moving on to posability, and he's already got way more than regular Godzilla. As we can see, he has the hinged jaw. He actually does have ball hinge shoulders, and also hips. On top of that, he has some single jointed knees, some swivelly feet, and another ball jointed tail. The joints are a little bit loose, but there's a lot more range there. For posability, Mechagodzilla gets one whole point. Moving on to playability, Mechagodzilla comes with this snap-on battle damage piece. Clips into place there, and honestly, the seams are pretty well hidden. He also comes with this little tiny vehicle called an HEAV, which the box tells me stands for Hollow Earth Anti-Gravity Vehicle. And it fits just nicely in his little claw. <coughs> 
And of course, lest we forget that mine came with these exclusive rubber bands. Playability is, of course, more than just rubber bands. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. So here he is with the Hong Kong Godzilla, and I think they look great together. Maybe it's the big kid in me who loves giant robots. Maybe it's the little vehicle for him to munch on. Either way, I'm really enjoying this Mecha Godzilla. so for playability, he gets one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Like I said, I'd have never bought this on my own if it wasn't discounted, but now that I'm playing with it, I really like it. The extra articulation does make it stand out from the other Godzilla and add to its value. So for price, I'm giving Mecha Godzilla one whole point for a grand total of five out of five. These figures have nice open boxes that give you a chance to kind of play with them a little bit in the store to figure out if you'd like them. They're sculpted nice. They're not super poseable, but you know what? For figures that you're just going to basically be doing this with, I think they're fine. A lot of playability and honestly not a bad price. Although in terms of value, I do think that Mecha Godzilla does kind of inch out over Godzilla himself. I loved Godzilla movies as a kid, so I'm really excited for the new one. And who knows, maybe I'll actually pick up the King Kong to go with this guy and see how he is. Would you like to see that? Sound off in the comments and let me know. While you're down there, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole, and don't forget to follow me on our new Facebook. I'll be back again real soon with some other reviews, but until then, have fun.